Aloha everyone and welcome to another video by me, Kay Elmer, and in this video I would like to share with you something very, very unique, uh, very special, and in its infancy of getting the word out to the world about what this is all about. Uh, it is just really the most surprising thing I've run across since I ran across C60 two years ago. Uh, and I just have been researching this, uh, uh, doing a very deep dive for the last uh, couple of months and doing a month of experimenting on my own. And I just wanted to put this together to share with you what I've learned so far, which is pretty much the theme of my, my YouTube channel here. Um, the, what I'm talking about is a substance called Brown's gas. It's also known as HHO, and it's been primarily used in the welding industry uh, since the 70s. And it's um, it's its entry into the health and wellness space is very recent. Um, there is not a tremendous amount of research being done on it up till now, um, and it's it's very much very very new. It's exact, you know, just. It's so interesting how it replicates um, the, the interest in C60. So it's something that I just kind of stumbled across, actually. And I just really, really just am just very, very surprised at the results that I've gotten um, and, and with my experience with Brown's gas. And the question here that I'm putting forward to everybody is, is this better than carbon 60? So let me share with you what I've learned and what I've been experimenting with and the results that I have. And then you know chime in let me let me hear what you got to think now this video is part of my electro healing series as opposed to the carbon 60 series because it takes electricity to generate brown's gas and what brown's gas does is it affects your the, the energy of your body with the whole concept of electrons and protons and let me go ahead and I'll get into that in a moment but uh, for you folks that are interested in C60 um, and are and are actively in taking C60 um, and you know that C60 is an electron donor and it's a super antioxidant wait do you hear what Brown's gas can do for you so uh, it's gonna get a little science nerdy here for a few minutes please bear with me but if you follow along you'll understand uh, the progression of the information I'm about to present. So first things first, let's jump right in. Um, disclaimers, the statements made in this video have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I do not recommend or endorse any specific products, procedures, opinions, or other information that may be mentioned. Reliance on any information appearing and discussed in this video is solely at everyone's own risk. Some material discussed in this video is theoretical and conclusive evidence remains to be published. So, for those of you who'd like to comment about things that I say <laughs> that aren't proven science, yes, I know, it's theoretical. So let's bear with me and uh, come for the road, <laughs> come for the ride, okay? Uh, so the very first thing that I just wanna do a real quick intro, what is hydrogen? And the, and the reason that I even got into hydrogen to begin with, specifically molecular hydrogen and its health benefits, okay? So first of all, you know, it start, all started with C60 a couple years ago. You know, uh, the recommendation at the time was, hey, eat an apple after you take C60 because the hydrogen works really well with C60, blah, 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 blah. And the next thing you know, almost everybody I know that was taking C60 started also uh, drinking hydrogen water from one of those little bottle things or taking the tablets and so forth. And so it became kind of this really good combination. And people found out that they really did work well together because they're both super antioxidants. But, you know, let's start with what is hydrogen, which is, you know, how I got into hydrogen. Um, so what is hydrogen? Well, it, it's basically, if you look at the periodic table, it is the smallest and lightest element on the entire periodic table. It is only comprised of one electron, one proton. And when you look at the human body and you break it down to its atomic particles, what's really interesting is that the human body is 64% hydrogen and 24% oxygen. Now, of course, you combine those two and what do you have is you have H2O and we all know that we are literally walking saltwater aquariums, right? Your most average human beings are like an 11 half gallon saltwater aquarium. I mean, you're just all water pretty much. Uh, and then there's 12% carbon, we all know that. Uh, and then there's 2% other, all the other minerals that compose all the hard the hard parts of your body. But you know, the thing is, is we're, we're the majority of us is, uh, of our bodies is hydrogen. So when you think about taking hydrogen as a supplement 
and how do you get hydrogen in your food and your air you know it's you really start getting deep into the whole concept of hydrogen and finding out you know how important it really is and it's really overlooked i think i think it's very overlooked in maintaining our, our health is, is the concept of taking in hydrogen. So a uh, real quick science lesson here. How is H2 produced to, to, you know, to provide as a supplement? And well, first of all, H2 is the hydrogen atom, which is one proton, one electron, and, and combined together to form, to form two hydrogen atoms forms hydrogen gas. So H2 is two hydrogen atoms, and that's H2. It represents the hydrogen gas. Uh, and so how it's produced, and if you have one of those little bottles, and I actually made a video about those bottles and this membrane called the PEM membrane, and some of those older bottles, or their cheap bottles, don't have this membrane, and they produce all sorts of weird chemicals and things, and it's not good for you. Uh, and then I, the video I had said, well, you know, it's not good for you, but not worse for you than tap water. That was the outcome of that one video. But uh, I, this is like the third video on hydrogen I've done. So, but But this puppy... Um, your basic hydrogen bottle setup or your hydrogen machine, whatever you've got, is that you've got this membrane, usually a PEM membrane. It takes the H2O, the water that it's, that it's uh, you put, you fill it with water, and then you just turn on, uh, you just do an electrolyzer. You've got an anode and a cathode, positive, negative. You sub put an electrical charge into the water separated by a membrane and on the anode side the plus side uh, is going to be producing oxygen and oxygen comes out one side and then hydrogen it breaks apart that h2o thing and the oxygen goes one side hydrogen goes the other side and the h2 gas gets broken off from the h2o o goes this way h2 goes this way follow the green arrow and then basically this comes out and then you would then this bubbles into water that you would drink the hydrogen water or if you have a machine for hydrogen inhalation you'll be breathing hydrogen gas through the machine okay and that's just really as simply as it gets it's just an electrolyzer and water uh, and so now what are the health benefits of just regular old molecular hydrogen well this is the one thing that's not theoretical there's actually I mean hundreds and hundreds of science studies on the effects of hydrogen and, and, and why it works, how it works, what does it do. It's actually being used today in hospitals because it has got some remarkable uh, health benefits of just basic hydrogen gas. Uh, first of all, that's a super antioxidant. When you start taking a look at some of the most popular uh, antioxidants that people take for supplementation you know you're looking at q10 look how big this thing is 863 atoms in this giant molecule uh, even vitamin c has 176 atoms that forms this molecule of vitamin c so it's quite large and you get down into the carbon 60 here 60 carbon atoms formed into a sphere to form the carbon 60 molecule that's one nanometer in in size which is like one nanometer if you took carbon 60 this little molecule and you lined it side by side and formed a line it would take 100,000 carbon 60 molecules to form the width of the average human hair that's how small these things are but take a look at this hydrogen only has two just two atoms and it, it is literally the smallest thing in, in in our universe right now that we know of uh you know in terms of atoms okay there's quarks and all those other things let's not go there so and so the whole item idea here is that it's literally the smallest one it's way smaller than carbon 60 and what makes it really unique is because of its size uh, and because of what it does so uh it it basically here's the health benefits it reduces inflammation uh hydrogen gas reduces risk of metabolic syndrome it provides neural protection for various diseases and types and types of cranial injuries uh, reduces side effects associated with uh, cancer radiation treatment uh, prevents liver damage for diabetic patients it reduces the effects from parkinson's and every one of these statements is made and you can go find some studies for it and I'll, I'll tell you where to go find them too so hydrogen is very molecular hydrogen there is a lot of data it's a lot of science it's all out there super super good for you and so there's been a hydrogen industry going on for a long time you know and that's where you know and that's how it got tied into c60 and and where those industry have, have produced commercial products is you know these little bottles that people buy or you take tablets now I, I i had one of these bottles and i found out it didn't have the membrane and it made chlorine and i didn't i don't like the taste of it so um it's you know no worse than tap water but i don't like to drink chlorine in tap water anyway so i just kind of threw my bottles away and i've been using these tablets the viva tablets and the h2 elite tablets and that's actually how I've been taking hydrogen for a couple of years now, just using the, the the tablets. You know, and it works out just fine. Uh, that's I made a video on that too. 
Uh, and then, if, you know, other folks will get these pitchers, uh, and the electrolyzers are sitting inside there, and they split the water, and they bubble the H2 through the pitcher, and you drink the water. Uh, you've seen these things, these water Kangen type of machines, Jupiter machines. Uh, and they also, they produce, quote, alkaline water, but they also create hydrogen in there. Uh, so you're drinking hydrogen water. Um, and these and, and then the water actually just comes right out the spout. It's not a bubbler, and you can't breathe it. But then you've got these machines over here, which are actually hydrogen inhalation machines that produce hydrogen gas that you can then put the bubbler you know put a bubbler on the end of the tube uh, and stick it in water to create hydrogen water or take the the tube stick it up you know i'm not stick it up your nose but put a cannula on it and then you can just breathe it too so it's an inhalation slash bubbler and then and then that these that's what these things do and so these are all the different products that are, that are out there to support all of the different science that's going on and people have been benefiting from hydrogen for quite a while now i'm and that's it I, that's about hydrogen now okay so and i just for more information about hydrogen uh, you know, these are two guys that have done a tremendous, awesome, superior body of work. Uh, it's Tyler LeBaron for the Molecular Hydrogen Institute. Uh, you can Google him, uh, YouTube, that guy's tons of different great interviews. Awesome site. There's like, if you want to look up hydrogen studies, this is the site you go to. Links all in the video description. And then there's uh, Taiwan Hubbard on YouTube, and he's got the H2 Minutes uh, YouTube channel, and he's just got tons of videos about how fantastic hydrogen gas is for you uh, and drinking hydrogen water so by all means hydrogen is awesome but this video is about brown's gas but i just wanted to give you the the groundwork here how great is hydrogen and is there something better and then let's bring in yule brown so now yule brown uh which is what the gas was named after because he submitted the patents for it a Bulgar bulgarian born australian national uh, born in 22, died recently in 1998. Uh, he was a trained electrical engineer and a professor from Australian University. Uh, he basically, as an electrical engineer, uh, tinkered around with uh, trying to improve the efficiency of welding equipment and welding fuel. And he's all about welding now. Okay, that's why this is so uniquely different about Brown's gas is it hasn't really been looked at as a health remedy until just these most recent like 10 years. It's very similar to, you know, C60. Uh, and so in 1974, he filed a patent for Brown's gas. And in 1976, he filed a second patent for it. Uh, which he was awarded. Uh, now, what he did was he showed that hydrogen and oxygen could be separated from water, which we all know that's possible, but then burned cleanly and, most importantly, safely, if we all remember the Hindenburg. That's why people just don't burn pure H hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is extremely explosive. Um, and so you just do not want to, you know, uh, try to use that as a fuel. Most welders, you know, they're using acetylene, oxygen, so forth, right? Propane, butane, all these different things. But, you know, most people do not try to just burn hydrogen. Uh, uh, but he came up with a hydrogen-oxygen combination that burned cleanly uh, using many different objects. And, you know, what's really, really unique about this, and here's just the abstract from his, one of his, his 1974 patent. And I'm just pulling this up because, because I want you to understand where he was coming from. And he never got into the whole health aspect of Brown's gas, by the way. He only focused on the welding aspect of Brown's gas, which makes this so unique. But, he, you know, when he put it all together and he submitted this for uh, patent, uh, basically, he was talking about uh, his patent was on a gas that utilizing a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen generated in a substantially stoichiometric proportions in an electrolytic cell by electrolytic disassociation of water. More importantly, it relates to atomic welding. Now, when I first started getting into this, I never even heard the phrase atomic welding. And what that means is that Brown's gas, when lit, when burning, uh, changes the, the atomic structure of whatever it's put on, the flame is put on. It's just unbelievable. I mean, it's it's like, I was very surprised to learn about this because I didn't even know it existed. But, you know, if you're a welder, you probably knew about this for 10 or 20 years already. The, the welding guys, they all know about this, but the health guys are like just finding out. It's kind of cool. So now how is Brown's gas produced? Okay, and that's what's really unique here. Um, unlike H2 gas that's produced, uh, Brown's gas is produced with an electrolyzer, okay? Uh, you've got the anode and the cathode. You're passing electric current through water that also includes an electrolyte. 
the most common electrolyte used is sodium hydroxide, which is also lye, which is the stuff that used to be in all our soap 100 years ago or sooner. I don't know. But what happens is, is that in between the anode and the cathode, in the between the two electrical plates, where you've got one side is pumping out oxygen, and one side's popping out hydrogen gas, just pure hydrogen gas, just pure oxygen, O2, H2. In between the two, anode and cathode, is produced a third form of gas. Um, and this gas, is when, when, is, when is brought up and, and collected, is a form of gas called, and which is, they gave it a name, they called it Brown's gas. They also called it oxyhydrogen, or HHO. Okay, you'll hear the HHO a lot. If you look for YouTube videos, you'll most likely find Brown's gas called HHO, HHO generators for welding and so forth. Or there's very few health videos out right now. I think this video that I'm making right now will be one of the first. Um, there are other, a whole bunch of other interviews uh, of George Weisman and so forth, but this will be one of the first that actually covers it from a health perspective. Um, and, and so this gas comes out, and it's 66.6666% hydrogen and 33.3333% oxygen. So you've got the oxygen gas, O2, and two hydrogen gas molecules, H2H2, and it forms a gas, a different kind of gas combined together that is now called Brown's gas. And what's really amazing about this, um, about this gas, and, and here are some of the properties that, now, of course, remember now, Brown's gas uh, created, wrote his, filed his patent in 74. So he'd been tinkering around with it for what? 50 years, right? I mean, this thing has been around for 50 years. It's kind of like, you know, C60, you know, they came out in 86 and got the Nobel Prize in 96. So, you know, it's been around for a while, really used in welding, but now it's being looked at from a health perspective. And the story behind that is amazing. So, but here's the properties behind ground bounce gas. Now, what's theorized? And this is where we're going to go into theory now because this is all really kind of like, okay, everyone's trying to figure this out um, from a, like, what exactly is it? Uh, is it's theorized that Brown's gas is a mixture of diatomic and monatomic hydrogen and oxygen, which is um, meaning that it's monatomic, like O1, H1, one atom of oxygen, one atom of hydrogen, and diatomic, two atoms of oxygen to form an oxygen gas, and two atoms of hydrogen to form hydrogen gas. So you've got different elements of the same uh, or different forms of the same elements within the gas so you've got uh, just an oxygen atom oxygen molecule hydrogen molecule hydrogen atom all mixed up together with water h2o vapor in the gas and something that's theorized and called electrically expanded water and i'll get into that in, in a second and so it's got these four separate components that forms this one gas and then one of the things that, you know, and it's been, you know, they've been dinking around and tinkering with this for years now, okay? And so they're fine. This is what, uh, and there's actually in the links, I, I highly, anybody who's interested in this, there is a demonstration link to actually Yul Brown doing demonstrations. This really old video on YouTube, like posted, you know, years ago. But, it, but he's there and he's doing his demonstration and he's talking about Brown's gas. And he does all these different demonstrations. And, of course, so they've been experimenting with this for a long time. And so here's, the, here's some of the unique characteristics that, that differentiates brown gas from just H2 gas. That it has 400, it puts out 442.4 kilocalories of available energy in the gas versus 115.7 kilocalories from uh, just regular old O2. Okay, so the combined gas has literally four times the amount of available energy you know when using as a fuel all right now and then one of the things is as a, as a welding uh, torch you when used as a welding fuel uh, brown's gas has zero emissions burned it's literally water in right you put water in a tank electrolyze it brown's gas comes out you know if you set it up right and you burn that gas there are no fumes there's no exhaust the exhaust is it forms back in to water now it also alters, like again, atomic welding, it alters the molecular structure of what's being welded. If you watch that video, it's, 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 it's amazing what, what he does with this flame, uh, this brown glass, you know, brown's gas flame. 
Uh, and it changes temperature when applied to different materials. And in the video, he actually demonstrate that it can sublimate. It could, sublimation is changing a, a substance from one state to another, which is he takes tungsten, which is one of the hardest metals in the planet, and it takes 6,000 Fahrenheit uh, degrees, 6,000, that's like almost the heat of the sun, to get that to, to sublimate, to get that to melt, right? And he takes the bronze gas flame, and he, and he just basically passes it over tungsten, and it heats up and sublimates right and it but but that but that same flame he runs it past his arm and all it does is singe his hair and it doesn't even burn his skin and then he then he sits there and while the flame is on and this thing just melted tungsten so this this flame in the video melts the tungsten 6000 degrees fahrenheit and he reaches over and he grabs the tip of the torch and he just holds on to it with his fingers and it doesn't even burn him cuz the flame is it hot the flame is a completely different, um, it's basically an implosive uh, uh, reaction of water. It's literally water on fire, and it has a completely different property than you would have had, like, let's say, if you had a propane torch or an acetylene torch where there's no way you could touch the tip of the torch because the torch is hot because you're creating an explosive uh, thermal reaction as opposed to a non explosive and implosive reaction it's just fascinating what he does in that video uh, and then uh, when now when you take browns gas and you bubble it in water and this is what's really interesting for those of you who drink h2 water um, the half-life of browns gas in water is 24 hours versus only 20 minutes for h2 so for all these years i've been taking h2 water and I can't tell you how many times I made a glass of water with some tablets and spaced out and forgot about it. And it's been more than 20 minutes. Well, within 20 minutes, all the H2 gas just evaporates out of the water. Because H2 is so small, it goes in every direction. And it's just gone. And you have to start all over. Uh, so you have to, when you're making H2 water, you got to drink it really quickly. you got 20 minutes to get it in or it's gone. You know, And then you have to start over. But with Brown's gas water, it's you could make a batch of water in the morning, drink it all day, and you've got... Your brown's gas water for the whole day. So it, it's very different than H2. So the other properties, um, we'll get into in a second here, but what I want to do, okay, so I have a quote from George Weissman. So now, Yul Brown passed away in 1998, and, and before he passed away, um, another gentleman uh, who is a tinker, an inventor, came along. His name's George Weissman, and his company's called Eagle Research, and he started uh, producing Brown's gas or HHO welding generators uh, in the U.S. market and he started experimenting with it and he's a tinker and so he started tinkering around with it uh, and so this is one of his theories from one of his books uh, which is he states and this is where I get into the electrically expanded water aspect is he believes that matter has four phases uh, solid liquid and gas right and then there's this plasma phase uh, and so he like electrically expanded water, EXW, is water, this is George Wiseman's quote, is water that has soaked up extra electrons to become a negatively charged plasma phase of water. Electrically expanded water is not the same as the misnamed EZ water of George Pollock, which is, quote, the fourth phase of water, right, if you read that book. Uh, EZ water is not even water, it's H3O2 and exists in a gel-like state. And that's, that's, George is quoting. So what George is saying, and, and if you read the whole you know section of that book, is he's theorizing for those of you guys who are really into structured water and, and messing around with water, because water is a very unique thing. Um, this isn't the fourth phase of water per George. He's thinking that this is literally a new thing that has not been discovered before, called, and he's calling it the fifth stage of water or electrically expanded water. And what's interesting, and I want to point out, was he recently spoke, George recently spoke uh, at the 2019 Water Conference on the Physics, Chemistry, and Biology of Water uh, in October that was hosted in Germany where Gerald Pollack was speaking and, and numerous uh, just, you know, very well-renowned scientists were giving uh, speeches about, about water and all the different aspects of water and George was presenting there as well. And during the Q&A session right at the end, the gentleman who had just, produ who just uh, had done a presentation on easy water popped up and 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 and, and spoke spoke to george and theorized and said you know 
maybe this is not necessarily you know electrically expanded water but maybe this is also maybe this could be easy water with extra protons and so now there's some debate and there's a lot more research needs to be done again this is all theoretical but why i bring that up and this is why it's really important this is why this is electro healing this is why this may be better than c60 is because if it's if George is correct and it's got a lot of extra extra electrons that it picks up and it's that fifth stage of water and that's what the gas creates is this water or even if it's easy water which stands for exclusion zone or fourth phase of water structured water with extra protons what that means and this is why it's so amazing as a health thing is what that means is it's charging our body and it's charging our cells when you take it in okay and then so i want to point out something here that that a lot of folks don't forget because from you know remember your chemistry days in high school i don't uh you know but the idea of ph okay ph stands for potential hydrogen so here we go we go back to hydrogen again and the thing about ph and we all know this right i mean most people remember that but hey you know that our bodies run on an optimal level of ph around 7.35 Okay, and but the, here, the, here the thing is, is what is pH? How do you measure pH? Well, if you've ever had a pH meter, it's got what? Two prongs. It's got an anode and a cathode. You stick it in water and you measure the current between the two. And whatever that current is, or you know, it then tells you what the pH. So there's a corresponding, you know, basically translation between pH is the same thing as voltage because it's measuring the voltage across the anode and the cathode in, in a pH meter. That's what pH is. It's measuring voltage in the body. So the corresponding voltage of the body, and this, you know, there's tons of science literature on body voltage, is about 20 millivolts, okay, negative 20 millivolts. And so your optimum, you as a, as a human being, your body, has an optimum uh, pH level that it runs, that's what it's designed to run on at 7.35 pH, right? at and also and which also means at a negative 20 millivolts and so that's your optimum range so anything above that you know that the number goes higher as you start taking in antioxidants and anti and al alkaline foods and things for the numbers go higher it means it's more alkaline or if the numbers go lower it means it's more acidic and that's also translates in the same concept of alkaline and acidic high ph low ph high voltage low voltage is the same concept of electron donor the more alkaline something is or the higher the pH is or the higher the negative voltage is the it's an electron donor you're donating you're get you're gaining electrons right which is then puts you into a healing mode up to a certain point but any anything past the threshold of negative 70 millivolts or 8.23 alkalinity if it's anything more than that then it starts getting into unhealthy because your optimum is down here remember so up here is bad but this little range in here right here is normal healing and so i'm theorizing that what makes this so incredible what makes brown gas so incredible for our health is the fact that it's got those electric it's got those electrons as electrically expanded water or if it is easy water it's got those extra protons and let me show you what what that means but now if you take in acidic stuff it's an electron stealer so acidic stuff is i mean literally like a soda touching chemicals food preservatives the crap in the air emf i mean literally emf cell phone all that stuff is electron stealers and it causes your body to become more acidic and it causes your voltage to go up to, to a positive and if that happens you start getting sick and when you when you live at this level down here or you live at this level up here then what not only are you ill and your cells become damaged you end up with chronic diseases so it's all health optimum health is all about ph and voltage and how you can help yourself stay in a natural form of healing is by making sure that you're getting rid of those radical oxygen species or that oxidative stress right by ingesting or exposing or exercising or eating the right foods that are alkaline in nature so that you've got electron donation to keep you in this range of of, of voltage in this range of ph to stay healthy or if you don't you become unhealthy and again too much is not good so like i'm for one i'm not for drinking alkaline water i don't think it's good to drink alkaline water i think you should get you should raise your voltage 
and get your don't your donated electrons from a different source because your your stomach's got acid in it and you don't want to mess with the natural balance of your of your stomach. That's my personal opinion. Okay, don't beat me up over it, but that's my opinion about alkaline water. I think hydrogen water is awesome, but I think Brown's gas water is even more awesome because wait do you hear what it does? So one more time about this concept. Now when you actually look at how our cells, every cell in our body has what they call a cytoskeleton, which kind of keeps it rigid so it doesn't get squashed, okay? And around that is our cell membrane. And what's really, I think, just so fascinating about this, because when you talk about Brown's gas, you're talking about structured water, okay? Now, <laughs> our bodies are made up of structured water in a gel-like state. So that's easy water, right? And so on the outside of all of our cells is this membrane of water, of structured water in a gel-like state that's high in electrons. And then what happens is, is when we are exposed to light, okay, when we're exposed to light or we ingest things that have, um, you know, are like basically nutrients, then our bodies, our, our cells will extract protons from that, it'll extract protons and electrons. The electrons stay within the structured water, and the protons then get sucked into the inside of the cell through these cavities, through the cytoskeleton, to come into the cell, Then, which then does a couple of things. As those protons come into the cell, which normally runs at 7.5, so the cell itself runs at neutral pH for your body. But we have these things in our cells called lysomes. What these lysomes do is they run at an acidic, low pH, right? They run, they're very acidic to do their jobs because what do they have to do from an acidic nature? Well, what lysomes do in our inside of our cells is it eat up all the mitochondria gook and, and, and waste of that your cell because your cell produces waste and it, it just dissolves and eats it all up and gets rid of it. And so you need your lysomes to be able to attract and, and, and bring in protons in order for it to do its job for your cell to run at an optimum level. And at the same time, through your cytoskeleton, these protons come in through the cavities and also feed your mitochondria. And now if you know what your mitochondria does is it's your energy, it's your generator. Every little cell has a little generator in it called a mitochondria and when it pulls in these protons it creates energy and otherwise called ATP production and that's what gives you energy that's what makes you walk around and so it's through this process of ATP generation and lysomes doing the uh, you know a waste production or waste elimination your mitochondria producing energy this cell is a very happy little cell but here's the thing what happens when you have positive charge on the inside negative charge in the outside okay you have a little battery and this little battery is again essentially your bioelectromagnetic life force of this cell and so your body requires electrons your body requires protons to operate at an optimum level and of course if you're ill chronic diseases whatever it doesn't so what happens if something comes along and pumps you full of protons and electrons and you've been feeling down, you're stressed out, you have a lot of you know oxidative stress in your body, you have illnesses, damage, injuries, whatever. When all of those electrons come in from the brown gas or the protons that come in from the easy water or both, when it comes into your body, it does amazing things. So now if you want to know a lot more about what it does you need to listen to George Wiseman talk about what his customers have been telling him now what George Wiseman himself has has actually published because George Wiseman is the inventor of, of, of several different gizmos uh, mainly the um, uh, you know the uh, the HHO or the Brown's gas generating welder welding equipment but he's got an incredible story and his incredible story uh, starts around 2005 2006 when one of his customers one day told him that he took the gas from his welder that, that George sold him and he said yeah you know he put it in you know he, he made bubbled it in water and he had a, a melanoma on his forehead and according to George uh, what the customer did was he took a cotton ball and he dipped it in the HHO water and he taped it to his melanoma and like within a week or so uh, it was gone it just dried up fell off or and uh, and it healed over over a course of a few weeks but boom it was gone and, and the story goes on and on about more and more customers reporting to George that oh you know I was I had my welder and I decided to 
you know, bubble it in water and drink the water. Or I had my welder and I decided to breathe the fuel. I mean, who does that? But they did. And so more and more of his customers started doing that and reporting these incredible health benefits. And what George basically did was he didn't believe it. I mean, who would? But after 10 years, he decided, I think it's like in the early 2011, 2000, early teens, right? Uh, in the years 2000s. He decided to try it himself, and so then he started trying it, and I believe uh, that he probably kicked in around 2014, 2015 till now. So here's a guy who all of a sudden decided, you know what, my customers all keep telling me that it's really good for me or good for you as a human, so maybe I should try it. And so he started trying it himself, and the results were amazing. So then he eventually developed a brown gas generator for health. Uh, and then a couple of other folks have done so as well because it is in its infancy. The brown gas health craze has not started yet. It's in its infancy, and it's all kind of started with George. Uh, and so this is what he said in, in, his, in his writings about what happened to him since 2014, 2015. Uh, this is per George, and it's amazing. And he says, my sight has improved. He's worn glasses since he was nine years old, and he doesn't wear glasses anymore except driving. Um, his hair continues to darken. And now if you look at George's old videos, you can tell he's looking a little older than he looks now. It's pretty amazing. It's subtle. It's very subtle. But it's, it's, it's there. And you can could, you could tell the difference. His skin has changed. Um, and so he's saying that you know, his, his, he feels that his hair is growing back, that he used to be balder. Um, and that his psoriasis is gone, that he used to have thick, you know, thick peeling skin on his elbows, knees and feet, gone. Um, breathing and drinking brown gas water, uh, his skin is smoothed out, became supple, age wrinkles gradually disappearing, his scars that he had since childhood started disappearing, his age spots disappearing, his neuropathies are gone, he can feel perfectly in his feet and hands and his shins again, he had Titanus, sorry, uh, and, it, it's, and he had that. It's still there, but barely noticeable. He also went on to say that his warts are gone, that he had hand warts and planter's warts, which are caused by viruses, gone. Uh, his arthro arthritis, gone, and it hadn't been sick since 2005. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I guess he started in 2005. I got it wrong. Uh, and he lost weight, and he, he used to have a heart murmur, and his doctor reports he no longer has the heart murmur. Now, in, in the conference in October, he also mentioned in his, in his uh, presentation that they started now experimenting within the last few years on farm animals. Uh, and so they gave it to some chickens, and the, the, if for like the first week, the egg production of the chickens literally doubled for one week. It went back to normal after that, but it did something, and, and it, it definitely uh, doubled the amount of eggs that the chickens put out. And so <laughs> definitely an area for more research. And he also talked about increasing plant growth. Um, in, that, in, in his presentation, he talked about when you bubble browns gas in water and you feed it to plants in soil, that the growth rate increases by 30%. But if you do it in hydroponics, the growth rate ex, you know, explodes up 60% more growth if you put browns gas in water in a hydroponic system. So what does all of this mean? And, and, and so it's like... It's like the early days of C60, and if you remember what happened in C60, uh, the carbon-60 uh, molecule, it was discovered in 86. They won the Nobel Prize. The first application of C60 is a commercial lubricant. That's what they use it for. They use it to lubricate ball bearings and stuff. And there was and there was some interest in it, and from a, because it was really good for uh, oxygen, you know, radical oxygen uh, species. It would it was antioxidant. They started using it in the cosmetic industry about ten years later in the early two thousands, but they only thought of it as a commercial industry thing, and they didn't really think about people like actually eating it and ingesting it in oil. And that's kind of the exact same story here. It's like you know these guys use it for welding. For 30 years, all they did for with it was welding, and now within the last, let's say, 10 years, 10, 15 years, people are taking it for their health, and this is just one guy's story about what it has done for him, and it is amazing, right? And then if you listen to him talk, you'll hear about other customers, and, and he's also now trying to get studies going with people who took Brown's gas. And one of the biggest challenges is that he said he went back to look at all of the material on all the studies that of the hydrogen studies and discovered that some of those hydrogen studies, when you look at the materials and methods of the study, that they were actually doing Brown's gas and not actually H2 gas, but they weren't, they don't say it that way. They just go, we tried hydrogen. So he's trying to go through all of those studies to kind of pull out like which studies actually did a 66 
H2 and 33O2, you know, study versus H2 study, you know. Uh, and so he's trying to do all of that right now. And this is all just happening right now, today, this month, this year. Fascinating stuff. So now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have been doing this myself. So I ran across all of this stuff because I had been taking H2 tablets for a while now and I really wanted to try H2 inhalation. So I went shopping for an H2 inhalation machine and I ran across, and this is how I even started with this whole project, I ran across brown gas generators and so you know I'm me I'm I me so I'm like what's brown gas generators what and that's how this all started and I, I was like fascinated so I bought myself a brown's gas generator one month ago and I have been using it ever since so here is my uh, this is my personal testimony my opinion I've been using it for four weeks now and so my intake for the first three solid weeks was I drank a half to one gallon of Brown's gas water a day. I'd bubble it in the morning, drink the whole thing, and then uh, half a gallon. And then I'd come home, bubble another half a gallon, and try to bang away on that thing uh, uh, through the night. And then I would sit down at the end of my night, and for at least two hours while I was on the computer or on the couch, I would breathe. You know, I'm actually... I've actually got the cannula uh, in my nose right now. I'm breathing brown gas as I talk. Um, and I would just breathe brown gas um, for a couple hours every night. And I did that for three solid weeks until the holidays started and then things got messed up. Um, but so in week two, my eyesight began to change. And I didn't really think, you know, I'm, I'm busy. I'm just doing this thing. It's like my, I'm doing lots of different experiments all the time. And disclaimer, by the way, you all know I take a bunch of supplements. And, I, I have, and I'm consistently taking C60 way before I started this and I, to, to this day I'm taking the regular one tablespoon dose of C60 every day so but on top of that I'm doing brown gas so in week two and if you guys have been wearing glasses for a long time you can relate to this but uh, you know I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an older person but not geezer uh, no no offense to all you geezers um, and um, and so I've, I've been basically, I've been nearsighted most of my life. So for over like 30, 40 years, I've been wearing uh, glasses because I'm nearsighted. So whenever I'm walking around outside in my car, I'm wearing glasses in my house. I'm wearing glasses, you know, so I could see like, you know, watch TV uh, and drive and stuff. And so I've been, I've been nearsighted almost my whole life. And then for the last, I'd say 10, 15 years, you know, my eyesight, because I work on a computer most of the time, uh, my eyesight started to go really bad in terms of being able to see my computer clearly. And no matter how big a screen I get, you know, and so I had, I was prescribed uh, computer glasses, they, which they used to call reading glasses in the old days but I was prescribed uh, computer glasses they first they wanted me to have bifocals no they, those are horrible so I have I wear two sets of glasses one when I'm sitting at a desk and I take that off and I put my other ones on and I'm always wearing glasses you look at any picture of me going back 30 40 years I got glasses on so this is what was weird and but you know and, and every few years right your eyesight changes and you're like oh crap you know I'm, I'm getting older I got to go back to Dr. So-and-so and go get another up exam and, and then uh, update my prescription. So this is what happened. And I didn't even, I didn't put the two to two together. But what happened a couple of weeks ago was my eye starts, eyesight started to change. And I, and I just was like bumming out because now like I got to go get more, a different set of glasses. And I just couldn't see very well. And I was just kind of like, Ugh. Uh, it was irritating me. And then, uh, so one day I was sitting at my desk and I just took my glasses off to rub my eyes. I looked up. And my computer was clear as day, and I, and I, I was like, and, and it was just, I was shocked. I, I honestly, I'm just telling you, just honestly, I, I was shocked because it is it like the light bulb went off in my head that it wasn't my eyes getting worse, that my eyes were getting better, because when I could see without my glasses, and I was I was so shocked by that. I just I can't even explain, just the concept of like, holy crap, I can see without glasses. What the, you know. <laughs> it's like oh miracle you know i mean it was just weird it was just the weirdest thing and i was like wow and then i realized you know that's probably going on because uh, you know same thing with my other glasses and sure enough week two my eyesight started to improve by week three i'd stopped wearing glasses i couldn't see well with my glasses after all these years i couldn't see well with my glasses and so that kept up where i did not wear any glasses until like Earlier this week, and this is today is Saturday, uh, November 30th. Uh, Thanksgiving was a couple of days ago. Um, my daughter's home from college and, you know, people in the house, the holidays, everything's very disruptive. I'm off work. So my whole, um, 
my whole routine got thrown off. And plus, my machine, I needed to do some maintenance on my machine, and I, I didn't have time. So my machine, I had to, sh I didn't do it for three days. So this is what happened: was I did it every single day for literally three weeks, and in the fourth week, I had to stop. And I couldn't do it as much. I couldn't drink as much of the H water. Uh, I, I couldn't inhale as much of the gas. And, and then literally for three days, I didn't do anything until I could get to my machine and do the maintenance on it. So I did not wear any glasses for the entire third week. I'm in week four now. I still do not need any computer glasses at all. I'm not wearing glasses right now. But what happens was I started to go back to normal, normal meaning I need my glasses <clears throat> to drive around at night. And so I realized that, you know, this is only the first four weeks and there's a lot more experimenting to do. But for me personally, this thing has changed my eyesight. This thing, uh, Brown's Gas, also implies to me that it needs to be something that you take every day. Um, and that, and that, and that it, it does accumulate over time. Cause I'm thinking if I did this for six months, could I probably skip a week? Probably, but doing this just for three weeks and then skipping three or four days, you know, your eyes revert kind of back to what you want. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. I just wanted to share what I'm thinking, but that's kind of where I'm at right now, which is like my eyesight changed guys. My, I can't, I can't even express how incredibly astounding that is to me to not have to wear glasses after all these years and, and it's true i mean what what george was saying it happened to me so i'm very ecstatic about keeping up this experiment to continue to breathe brown's gas to continue to drink the water and i want to do it for a long time i want to see what happens if what happens to george happens to me so i'm just reporting where i'm at this is the four week mark and i just wanted to share it with you because it's just an amazing it, to me it's just amazing okay uh and and so now i just want to get back into the rest of the presentation um how i you know how how you take it for those of you interested in pursuing something like this uh this is what i did was um i went and bought the aqua cure which is the uh brown's gas generator that george wiseman uh sells now there's equally good um and i went and i went shopping for a long time before i picked one these aren't cheap but they range anywhere from 1400 all the way up to 20 500 okay and and the reason that they range in price is because they have like this one has more features but the safety features of these are pretty much equal I, I actually if anyone's interested i can do a comparison video because i actually bought this guy and the reason i bought this guy too now i've been using the aqua cure for the whole month right but like i said it went down for maintenance and when it went down for maintenance you know and it takes a couple hours to mess around with it uh to you know to maintain it and you have to do this maintenance thing um I was down for three days and after this experience of, 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 of getting my eyesight back and then all of a sudden it's starting to revert back because I wasn't, you know, I was like, I'm so I kind of like was like, okay, wait, I, I'm going to buy a little tiny backup. This thing's like half the size, but I want to buy a backup so that the next time this happens to me in the middle of a work week, I can just switch right over to my backup and I don't lose momentum and then I can just maintain this thing on the weekends because I just don't have time. Okay, so that's why I bought a backup. But now that I have two, I can do a comparison video. If anyone's interested, let me know in the comments. But so um, these are all highly you know, reputable companies. You've got Hydrogen for Health, um, you've, and you've got Alkaway. I've, I've had lots of different Alkaway uh, water filters over time the last 20 years. Good filters, so I'm sure the quality is just as good with this. So these are three different Browns gas uh, generators that are on the market right now that I would say are probably a good buy based on the people that you're going to get really good customer service. And believe me, customer service is essential. You will have questions. These things are not plug and play devices. These things require setup. These things require maintenance. And you will have questions. So do not buy one of these off of eBay from some Chinese faceless company that good luck. You're going to get this thing. You're not going to know what to do. The instructions will be in crappy English and you'll be screwed. So I'm just saying, if you're going to get into this, do it where you can just, like I can email George and he'll respond on a weekend. I mean, I emailed the guy one time. He responded to me on a Sunday. I mean, George is awesome. There's this guy over here that runs this thing called Steve. You know, his name is Steve. Awesome service. I mean, literally I ordered it and I was in my house in three days. So, so these two awesome. I haven't tried Alkaway. I don't really want to buy a third one. Honestly, I don't want to buy a third one. But I've got these two. So this is what you can do. Uh, and if you are interested in a comparison video, I can talk about the features, setup, and all that stuff between the two. 
just let me know. Uh, so that's that. And so if now if you want more information about Brown's Gas, uh, George Wiseman has written two books on the subject. And even better, book one tells you how to build your own. Okay, so this is why I find this guy really amazing. He's not in it for wealth and, and fame. You know, he's not holding it to himself. He literally has the instructions here, go build your own. And if you don't want to build your own, I'll build you one and you can buy mine, right? But the whole idea is that it's not proprietary. It's not a secret. He's not holding it to his chest. He wants the world to have Brown's gas generators. Build it yourself or buy one from him, buy one from Steve, buy one from anybody. If you want to try doing this for your own health, it's up to you. Um, but, uh, but you can buy the books here on his website. So he's got books on it as well. And that's it. This is my story about Brown's gas. It's part of my electro healing, uh, healing series because uh, you need electricity to create it. And it is. It is electricity it is electrons and it is incredibly healing it healed my eyesight i am astounded i cannot wait for what it does to me next and <laughs> hopefully it's all good uh so thank you so much i'm sorry i know it's a long video your time is precious but i just i'm so excited about this and i just really wanted to share it so thank you so much and you know and i also want to let you guys know that I do have a bioelectrical magnetics telechat telegram chat group. <laughs> uh, link in the description below if you want to join in on the conversation about bioelectrical magnetics, whether it's about Brown's gas, whether it's about uh, Bob Beck zappers or multi-wave oscillators or Rife technology or even quantum stuff, which we have a separate chat group for that. Um, you know, just feel free join our chat group, ask questions. Uh, I'm I'm always easily, easily in there, uh, always happy to help. Okay, so thank you again for your time today listening to my video i hope you learned something um and uh you know good health to you and and have a great day aloha